do. So I still think gold will be the best performer. Uh, right now, Bitcoin's leading, obviously, since the start of the year. Um, well, tell us about the future now. Let's prognosticate together your long-term outlook for the markets. Um, you mentioned to me that gold uh, is likely to be the best performing asset this year relative to stocks and Bitcoin. Uh, do you still hold that view and why? Yes, I do. I do. I absolutely do. So I still think gold will be the best performer. Uh, right now, Bitcoin's leading, obviously, since the start of the year. Uh, the S&P, I don't think quite is at this point, since gold had a pretty remarkable move to the upside. But the bottom line is, is this, is that you can't get away from the fact that the Fed is now keeping interest rates where they are. They're probably going to tighten a little bit more. But the bottom line is they're not going to be looking to cut until we see a massively nasty recession. So if we get in a little low level recession, which is where I think we're going to go by second half of 2023, the Fed's not going to be rushing to the aid of the market because they remember it. And Powell has said this. He said that we're not going to repeat the mistakes of Volcker in the 80s. And what Volcker did was he cut rates too quickly and we saw inflation roar back. So you have to keep in mind, they already are telling you their game plan that they're going to tolerate a low level recession. If it turns into a really bad one, eventually they're going to be forced to do that. But think about where stocks are going to be. If we get in a bad recession, where are earnings going to be for 2023, 2024? And so again, that means the stock market is going down. And obviously for me with Bitcoin, I'm looking at the long term. I love Bitcoin. I think it's got a huge future, but you still have some stuff that have to be sussed out here in Bitcoin, including regulation, including flushing out a lot of these hands. And again, one of the biggest issues with Bitcoin I have right now is that this run in Bitcoin has almost the same hype to me that Bitcoin had at 65,000. And that is really a concern. If you look at past bear markets that finally went bullish, the first 20, 30, 40% of a move in a stock or in a market, investors were extremely hesitant. They didn't believe it because they had been hammered so badly. That's not happening with Bitcoin. And that does concern me. And that's when, mm. when QE started, and it really never stopped in a significant manner all the way through until now, because now we finally yeah. have inflation that is above 2%. And I think that's something investors have to remember. I One of the biggest lessons, and I this is a, another, we talked about lessons that I learned as a trader. Um, in 2017, I was short the market. Uh, I was down on a lot of my shorts because I was trying to fight the Fed. And everyone kept saying, don't fight the Fed, don't fight the Fed. You know, the Fed is telling you they're printing, they're printing, they're printing. That was the right move. All right. Now, all of a sudden, they're not printing and they're sucking money out. They're reducing their balance sheet. They say they're going to keep. Yet for some reason, everyone's like, oh, new bull market. You know, like everyone mm -hmm. wants to fight the Fed. Yeah. That's part of our human psychology. We want upside in the market. We want to make market. We want to make money. But just keep in mind, if you didn't, if you weren't supposed to fight them on the way up, are we supposed to now fight them on the way down? I would say probably not. Uh, you know, I've been, this is a point that's been brought up to me. It's a very good point. Bitcoin, it's it, it, the entire lifespan of Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies at large. Uh, cryptos have only lived through a bull market up until now. If you think about what happened post 2009, it was the longest bull market in American stock market history. And that's, that was when Bitcoin was born. It's only basically last year that we started getting a sustained bear market. And now the big question is, what is, what, what is Bitcoin and the rest of cryptos going to do in a bear stock market? Right. And I think that's a great point. And, and it's not, you know, and, and like you said, it's, it's, it's a bear market now induced by the Fed where they're actually sucking out liquidity. And granted, the Fed will stop hiking. I think there's probably another 25 basis points, maybe two more of them. But the bottom line is, is that even when they go to not raising, they're not going to be going to cutting. And that's a concern because you're not going to see that flood of liquidity. And then if all of a sudden you have stocks taking another leg lower, that sucks more liquidity out. Remember, the, the asset markets are tied together. People that have crypto have stocks and vice versa. And fear and panic are one of the they're the biggest human emotions, right? That fear is going to ca catalyze the downside move, I would say, in Bitcoin. And that's what I'm predicting. I do think that we still have more downside on Bitcoin, unfortunately. Right. Okay. Well, that's uh, uh, unfortunate news for uh, tr traders of Bitcoin. Can you give us some good news? What's going to go up besides gold? 
Ah, so so gold, I like silver right now. Silver okay. is making a bullish pattern of consolidation here. Uh, I do think it has maybe a little bit of pullback, but I think silver is going to break out from this longer term trend line right here. Um, in the short term, I actually am a big fan. And this is just a short term trade. Please understand this is one for the next month or two. But I continue to be long natural gas down here. Natural gas, again, it was all pumped up here. And now you have this max mass exodus of people and, and institutions down here. But you're getting to levels where you actually it actually makes a sense to be a long trader on natural gas so i think natural gas could have a 20 percent pop back um from this level maybe even 40 percent off of these two dollar and 80 cent levels um and then also i think i think you start to you know as as we see some downside you start to look at other markets and i think in the past interviews we've talked about the ewz which is the brazilian stock market look at the macro pattern here you know if, if you're looking for other places to invest Look at that trend line. Now, we haven't broken it yet, but if you break above this trend line on the EWZ, the Brazilian Stock Market ETF, this could be a major breakout. And just think about this. If this market just goes back to its highs from 2008, just its highs from 2008. Now, think about where the S&P is compared to 2008. But you're talking about a triple, a 3x on your money just to get back to those highs. So I do think, like like I always say, there's always opportunities in the market. You just actually sometimes have to look a little bit harder. In bull markets, everything goes up easy. In bear markets, there's still opportunities. You got to do some research. All right. Uh, final question. If you were to go back to your first day of trading in your life and do everything differently, would you? Would I, you do I anything differently? A question. I mean, listen... <laughs> Would I, I think looking back at any part of my life, there's little pieces of that I would probably adjust slightly. But I do think that what I went through made me the trader that I am today. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it's kept me humble, right? I think that's part of it too. You know, there's so many people out there that are show flashy cars and all this craziness. And it's just mm -hmm. like the market, I realize at this stage in my career, even at this stage, the market can take it away from me very, very quickly. And so you have to always stay humble, be always conservative, and just, just understand that every day is a learning experience to continue to learn going forward. I think I read somewhere, this, I'm paraphrasing this quote, that um, you're, you're making a mistake today, but it's not, don't think of it as a mistake. Think of it as a learning experience for next time. Of course, that's there's right. some people Absolutely. that don't learn from their mistakes, but that's a separate issue. <laughs> don't be one of well, those and, people. And that was me early on. I, I tell you, David, like I literally would make the same mistake five times before I learned. And, and that's why I hope people people learn from me well, and then maybe, maybe you, you didn't so many times. maybe you didn't know it was a mistake. I mean, maybe somebody make makes a back trade and part of it is luck. Right. Maybe at the time yeah. when you were newer, you didn't identify the techniques that weren't put in place. Oh, and David, and you're so right about that. One of the worst things a trader can do is make a bad trade that works out. And when I say that is, mm. you know, let's say you you go high, you go long on on something and it still goes up and you think you're a genius, like in a bull market, like Dogecoin, like different things like those set you up for future failure because it's kind of an outlier. It's It happens because of the time of market we're in with the printing of money, with the government was sending checks to us. So it made so many people think they were genius traders, which, again, I'm all for being a genius trader but you have to understand that the best traders showcase themselves in bear markets when they still make money most traders can't